What is it that's in jeopardy? Our form of government. Our, our own form of governance, our democracy. That's what's in jeopardy. Because the government decides that the Constitution is a threat to national security, what does that tell you? When it start, when it's, when, when the Constitution itself is now being hollowed out from within by a secret government, that's anathema to our, our form of governance. I mean, the thing that was supposed to make Americans so exceptional, you know, the foundation of the of those extraordinary words in the Declaration of Independence. That's why I've dedicated the rest of my life to defending life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, because those are inalienable rights. They cannot be violated. They're inviolate. Those are sovereign rights only that the people you cannot take those away. And that's precisely what the government said. I never imagined it would happen in the U.S. in the manner that it's happened with 9-11 as a trigger excuse. We didn't consent to have our emails be read, to have our credit card statements collected and placed into massive data warehouses where the United States government now has the ability on the fly to create complete personal psychological activity, political profiles on every person in the United States and apparently many people worldwide. What brought me out was uh, the uh, transgression of the Fourth Amendment, uh, the loss of privacy, one of the most fundamental uh, rights uh, of, of human beings and written in, in, in part of uh, American uh, uh, the DNA. I was, because I was a senior executive of NSA, and much to my horror, um, I discovered that in the days and weeks right after 9-11. I had people coming to me in private saying, what are we doing? It's supposed to be the prime directive of NSA, you don't violate the Fourth Amendment rights of U.S. citizens, legal, resident legal aliens, without a warrant. And yet here we are turning the vast power of NSA, which had l largely unfettered surveillance powers overseas, and turning it on our own country. Now we're finding out that those surveillance powers are being turned on, the, on citizens on a very large scale in other countries as well. I have a certain understanding of what America is. And uh, I voted for uh, candidate Obama because he believed and supported uh, privacy. He became president and be betrayed my vote and betrayed his own candidacy. Okay, exactly. They can do four things. If you look at the cell phone spyware, and these are the demos I've seen, number one, they can listen to all of your phone calls and your voicemail messages. Number two, they can read all of your email, text, and IM messages. Number three, they can monitor your movements with astonishing precision, and more importantly, they can turn on the microphone on your cell phone, even when it's turned off, and listen to room conversations. So, if your cell phone is uh, on the dinner table, or next to your bed, they can hear everything that's going on. Right, that's on what then. can occur very easily. And that's why Edward Snowden wanted everyone to put their cell phones in the refrigerator. Well, it, it is the most fundamental systematic violation of the Fourth Amendment and of democratic principles, I think, that we've seen in, in many, many years. It threatens to turn the entire democratic framework on its head. The whole notion that was part of the Bill of Rights, that the government has restricted authority and needs cause, probable cause, or a warrant to be able to intrude into our private lives has been eviscerated. And they know that they're doing it unlawfully. That's why it's been kept in the secret. And I went to a reporter. I was there early on, right after 9-11, the foundational secret surveillance programs that metastasize and become industrialized on, a, on an extraordinary scale, in which we're now receiving you know, prima facie evidence in documentary form from the Edward Snowden disclosures. What you have to remember is the government does not build bombers or battleships. They have contractors do that for them. And once the contractors build and develop the software, they're free to sell it to whoever they wish. So foreign governments, dictators, uh, corporate uh, thugs who want to get back at ornery employees, uh, want to stifle unionization, you name it, they can use it.
basically any picture I take, they can see. Yeah, and it's not it's not even so much the picture that I send about the meal I had for breakfast or whatever. It's those, those private pictures, those pictures for your friends, for your loved ones, the ones that no one deserves to see but you and those who you send it to. And that's uh, voyeurism when people start looking in on that. So you think that people are looking at you as you're sending things to your boyfriend? They can. They absolutely can see anything. Well, it's, it's not that they can. It's that they've saved it. It's there forever. Who will be targeted among the many political activists are going to be targeted? And that's what's happened time and again, whether you look back at COINTELPRO moving forward up until today. This information in the hands of government is going to be used to disrupt activities designed to have progressive social change. We know that, that's historically been, been what's happened. This is a return to the discredited days of, of J. Edgar Hoover, but now superpowered, supercharged by technology that he only dreamed of having. So I'm an environmentalist and I work full time for the Earth. And so when I speak out for the Earth, I don't want any cops or NSA spooks spying on me. Why would they object to someone working on the environment? I think that the NSA um, is in the uh, military industrial prison complex is afraid of environmentalists because we threaten their basic uh, principles of being able to destroy whatever part of the planet that they feel like at any time. That's, so you, you, you get in the way of, of big mining and other, other big... Can... That's right. We're working to stop fracking. <laughs> We're working the to back there stop that like pollution of the atmosphere, climate change. The national security issue. Yes, that's right. I mean, climate change is a national security issue, so the government should be working with the people, not against the people who are working to protect the planet and to stop climate change. What did they do to try to crush you? Crush me. They tried, they tried to destroy me. They wanted, I, I was the first whistleblower after Daniel Ellsberg to be charged with espionage for non-spy activities. What, for holding up the mirror? They, they threw everything they had at me. I mean, it was, they, they wanted to destroy my life and put me away for long. I was facing 35 years in prison for having simply taken an oath to support and defend the Constitution. That's all I did. I didn't take an oath to defend secrecy and using secrecy as cover for unconstitutional acts and conduct on the part of the government. fascist state is already in place and I want it dismantled. Now you've been around for a long time and you've seen this before. Right. Not, Not to this long. extent. Not to this extent. This makes the Sasi look like uh, open society people. Say it again? This makes the Stasi look like open society people. No, but you didn't live under Stasi. You lived under well, I didn't expect Obama to uh, put in place drone warfare, kill lists, uh, total uh, spying on everybody, anywhere. It's, a, and it's so hard to fight this with his pretty face on it. Now it says conservatives only, so I take it you're a conservative. Tea party, too. Most people here, as you know, are liberal. For me to be here amongst liberals and feel this comfortable, you guys are waking up, and I'm glad. I am so happy, and if we can get the rest of it woke up, understanding what the Fed is, understanding what the IRS is, understanding that this nation is in peril right now. If you guys could get all that, man, we'd all be on the same side, wouldn't we? But you know what? You love the Constitution, and that gives me hope. That gives me hope, because the parties don't matter anymore. 
they're all the same. We're gonna fix that, of course, but it's gonna take me a little while. Tell me, tell me why you're here. Hey, how's it going? Why am I here? Well, I heard that uh, they were gonna be protesting the unconstitutional invasion of our privacy, and I'm all for standing against this incredible super invasion, seeing if they can make a criminal out of you and me. Uh huh. How about innocent until proven guilty? And uh, I'm here also to well, represent the faith in God-based community. Now, why is that important to the faith in God-based community? I mean, doesn't God also snoop on everyone? Well, you know, that's a good point. You're right. Uh, the eyes of the Lord are in every place, observing the good and the evil. You're scripturally based yourself. So tell me about your porn searches. <laughs> well... <laughs> it's extensive searches, go ahead, sir. It is my own private search, so therefore the NSA has no right to go into my computers and to know what I'm looking at. Especially in being the 21st century, you can use the internet for anything, so they do not have any kind of right to search what I'm searching, what she's searching. It doesn't necessarily have to be about porn. It could be emails that I sent to my coworkers, to friends, to family members, you know? And that's why Absolutely. we're here. Yeah. <laughs> you can profile someone very, very easily. Extremely easy to profile someone. With the metadata, you can say, okay, so this person has been calling this person maybe 10 times. So maybe they're in love. And maybe this corporation has been calling this corporation. So you can say, oh, there's going to be a takeover. This company's going to buy out this company just from the metadata. And uh, it's very, very dangerous. I hope people realize that and I hope they do something about it. Remember, I was eyewitness to the subversion of the Constitution. I was eyewitness to high crimes and misdemeanors being authorized by the President of the United States himself. Which President and why? Well, it's pres President Bush. I confronted them within at great risk even then. We, we were able to see uh, sort of a little window into the fusion centers and the material that we got that was related to the surveillance and disruption operation against the Occupy movement. We could see local police agencies and federal government sort of routinely uh, seeking, going to the fusion centers, trying to get intelligence from them, trying to get material from them. And it's obvious that the fusion centers are just a mass unchecked warehouse of information. Uh, collected on people without probable cause, without a basis. So millions of Americans are in fusion centers one way or another, some data that's collected on them without a basis, and there's no check on what's being collected. Well, EPIC, my organization, has challenged in the Supreme Court the legal claim that the NSA can actually do this. So we're hoping that the court will take our case, because if they do, we think we'll win. But even as that's going on, there's also legislation in Congress. This week we'll have the USA Freedom Act introduced by Senator Leahy and Congressman Sensenbrenner. And it's a great proposal. I hope it gets a lot of support. I'm sorry. I'm not doing interviews right now. Mike is a couple with NBC News. This is for tonight's news. Do you have reason you think you can pass an amendment? Are you concerned at all that you're giving credence to Edward Snowden? Well, a lot of people. With the Sorry. I love that. You also have the NRA now with you on this. Is that going to help? As many Americans as we can have supporting this, the better. When the White House says that, look, the Snowden disclosures are damaging national security, how do you know they're wrong? Well, they're damaging the Constitution. The White House is damaging the Constitution. Right, but how do you know what the NSA is saying and the intelligence community is wrong? I attend briefings. They're welcome to share information with me. And from what you've seen, is there damage? <laughs> I can tell you that the phone records issue uh, is something that is not implicated in the 54 uh, attacks that they claim were thwarted. So um, that's been publicly disclosed by a number of members. Do you believe? Uh, do you believe Ed Edward Snowden is a hero? Uh, I believe I that he, he is a hero. He is a hero. He's a whistleblower. And he's a hero. And you guys are. I've called him neither a hero nor a traitor. What I think he's done is exposed 
some uh, information that Americans need to know about. So you, you think he's done the right thing? I think he had very few options, but the, the issue is not whether uh, uh, he's done the right thing or not. I think that he's certainly broken some laws um, and uh, should be uh, prosecuted? Uh, prosecuted for those laws that he's broken. But at the same time, those are the options he had. He made a decision and, and he went with it. But are you, are you grateful that he's done what he did? We wouldn't have the reforms to the NSA uh, if not for what he did. Now, why do you think the government is collecting so much information on all of us? I think because um, it gives them a feeling they're doing something. I don't think they can use that information well. Um, the Tarsenev um, brother, uh, we had two warnings. We had warnings from the Russians to the CIA. We had Russian uh, warnings from the Russians to the FBI. And they said, this guy is a bad character and you need to watch out for them. That was still with everything that NSA had that was not enough to stop the Boston Marathon, uh, the Boston Marathon bombing. So uh, my feeling is this whole system has not been architected strictly for terrorism, but for other purposes. And what other purposes is that? I think monitoring the public uh, and eventually making it public so we'll all become fearful and more easily controlled. So you think it's psychological? I think that if you call up a South American president and you start telling them all the dirt they have on them and how easy it would be for you to give that to their local press, yes, I think you can control it. Have they been trying to shut you up now? No. They, well, remember, I, I had no voice when, when I was facing, you know, I was, I was behind several eight balls. I had run out of money defending myself privately. I was facing what would have been a million to three million just to defend me from the time I was indicted to the time I would have gone to trial. I ended up being declared indigent before the court. I had no choice but to accept the representation. But it was extraordinary representation from the federal, uh, Maryland federal public defenders. But I knew that wasn't sufficient. I knew that it also had to directly inform and influence the court of public opinion. And so, uh, Jessalyn Radak, she uh, wrote this extraordinary op-ed in the LA Times. I contacted her and she was my voice when I had none. She's the one that got what was at stake and she knew it was more than just going after me. As unprecedented as it was to make a prime example of me, drive that the crowbar of national security right through me and prop me up out in the common commons, you know, agree and say, hey, this is what happens when you hold up a mirror of the government. We're going to criminalize you holding up a mirror to our criminal conduct. She got what was at stake. It wasn't just my life. It wasn't just my freedom. But you know how and she was my voice. Extraordinary leadership. She led that campaign in the court of public opinion, turned around and informing the public and the press. Even the Washington Post, on the eve of my public trial, which would have been the 40th anniversary, by the way, of the publication of the Pentagon Papers with Daniel Ellsberg, the Washington Post said, you know what, maybe you are overreaching government, maybe he is a whistleblower. You know what, we do have an interest in the internal affairs of government and your conduct, especially when you do it in the name of national security, in the name of the people. Extraordinary, extraordinary op-eds. So. Well, what part of our domestic policy sucks. Tell me about your sign. What? How did you get it? Get to that point. I got my sign. Well, I thought I needed something original to uh, tweak the uh, public's indifference, which is why I'm standing here instead of preaching to the, uh, you know, already uh, informed.